Time now for all things Gators, all things orange and blue. Dan Hicken and Frank Frangie. What's up, Hick? Uh, lots is up. Uh, we'll discuss. Thank you to Southeast Orthopedic Specialists, the best in the business. Uh, visit se-ortho.com. They really do great work, Frank. I don't, I'm not just a spokesman, I'm a client. Um, just even like if my son who plays high school football, he had a bulky knee, went and got it checked out, did an MRI just to be sure. Uh, they, they care about you. They check you, they make sure you're okay. They do a wonderful job. So I wanted to mention those guys. I appreciate everybody at Southeast orthopedic specialists, uh, the best in the business. What I don't appreciate are the Florida Gators going to Vandy and doing something oh. they haven't done since this fat gray haired man was 25 years old, losing. To the Commodores. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The 19, Commodores. 1988 is the last time. 1988, it Frank. Haven't lost to Kentucky and Vandy in the same year. I think since like 1974. How about that? How about that? Yeah. It was a, uh, and here's There's the a lot of people thing. to blame here, including I, I, the Ox Gator who went yeah. to Nashville and couldn't bring back a win. Graham yes. Cam over here who talked nonsense on right. uh, last, last week. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of people who got to bear some responsibility for this one, Frank. And, and by the way, if you're in podcast world somewhere all over the world and you have no idea who he's talking about, let him go. He's rolling. Okay. He's, he's, you, you should have heard him before we started filming. Okay. Just so you know that. So he is wound up. Uh, here's the bad thing among the bad things. Yeah. It seemed like they had turned a corner of sorts. I, I, know. I, I don't think they were, they weren't ready to go to the playoff, but no, and, and beat Ohio state, but it seemed like they had turned the corner. Everything was calmed down. This was, I'll say this, what an outlier. They, they, of all the things they haven't been good at this year, they've been very disciplined from a penalty standpoint until this game. It was, a, it, 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 it was unbelievable. Dan, I, and, I, and I tweeted this, I was, I was working on another college game, so I couldn't watch it live, so I went back and watched the game. It one They're stretch. They just blown it off. The, <laughs> there were about eight or nine mistakes in a row at one stretch. Oh, my God. It was bizarre. It, was, it, it wasn't just bad. It was bizarre yeah. how everything kept happening the way it did. And it was just it – was, it, was it was a really bad loss. There's no – I, I want to come with you on this, by the way. There's no sugarcoating this one. Yeah. That is a really bad loss. I know it's just his first year. Right. And he's going to gut the roster, and it's going to look different. And they're recruiting well, and, and I'm glad they're recruiting well. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I haven't lost any confidence in any of that. Okay, I haven't. But that was a bad loss. There's mm -hmm. no getting away around the fact you can't – winning the games on Saturday still matters. Even yes. if you're not in your year, and even if it's a, a, a building year, winning the games on Saturday still matters. And that was a bad loss for Florida. No getting around it. Bad loss. And now somehow they got to rally the troops. We'll talk about FSU in a minute, but they play Friday night in Tallahassee yeah. against a team that is really firing on all cylinders. And it looks like a very – a uh, tough task for them. But let's get back to the Vandy game for just a second. More than, and we'll get into Anthony Richardson and we'll right. get into the dumb mistakes. But right. the most disappointing thing to me, Frank, in watching that game, and I'm not an expert on X's nose, but I can tell you this Florida in the trenches got their ass whipped by Vandy. Vandy whipped yeah. their ass. They whipped yeah. their ass on the O line and they whipped their ass on the D line. And that is not good to say the least. Yeah, and here, and I agree wholeheartedly on all of that, co-sign all that. Here's what bothers me about uh, what may bother me about the, the Napier regime. And again, he just got there, so I don't want to be unfair. Right. But over the course of, of, of your career coaching somewhere, your tenure, or even over the course of a year, you're going to have games where you're not ready to play. Mm -hmm. Cold, early in the morning, mm -hmm. looking ahead to FSU. It had all the earmarks, okay? But you got to be good enough as a play caller, uh, as a coach, efficient enough that when you're significantly better than the opponent, that you overcome the fact that they're a little hungrier in the trenches than you are. Uh, there, there's, the great teams sometimes get beat up more than you would think, but they find a way to win the game because they run the trick player or the whatever and, and they make the big play. They couldn't overcome the fact that they were getting physical. Because I agree with you, Dan. They got physically beat up. Yeah. A team that should never physically beat them up, but they couldn't find a way around that. That's what bothered me the most. Find a way around it somehow, right. and they weren't able to do it. So, yeah, they were physically beaten. I, and I will tell you this. I am concerned about the play calling. Now, my gut tells me Billy Napier is going to recruit really good players, and I'm not sure Alabama or Georgia or Clemson are winning championships because of play calling. They're winning championships because they got the five stars and you don't. That's why right. they win. I, I get right. that. But if I see one more play-action fake down 14 points with three seconds left in a game – 
I'm going to wonder, what are we doing? Right. They're not biting on the play fake <laughs> down 14 to, down 14 points with eight seconds left. Quit play faking when no one's biting. I, I think that's one of the things that bothers me the most. So, yeah, I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about the, all the mistakes they made. It was, I will say this, it was a bizarre game that – that I mean, Princely gets the late hit. The center gets the late hit. Yeah. Uh, the, the APR has the sack, but he's got his hand kind of up in the face mask a little bit, barely, barely on the face mask. But it was in the face mask, or it was weird stuff in that game. And I and look down a bunch of guys that man, they were playing with. I don't want to say this. Dijon Reynolds it looks like he's a tough nosed slowest player. receiver in Gator history. Boy, it took a great forever. game. Slow receiver. It, <laughs> it took forever. I'll tell you a story since you're an old Gator. Yeah. There was a the last time they had lost to Kentucky before uh, they started losing to Kentucky. Okay. Donnell. 80, 86. Okay. Uh, last time they won. They, they, had, they had a guy named Wolford. Remember Daryl Wolford? Willard, Daryl Willard. Okay. He Daryl Willard had Daryl Willard. Not Don. I, why do I always think of Dar- Donnell? It's Daryl. Daryl Willard. Remember, yeah. remember him? Yeah. They threw a touchdown past him. He had been the slowest receiver in Gator history until this. Yeah. And, 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 and God bless Dijon Reynolds. I'm glad we had him because he caught yeah. a bunch of balls. But, uh, and, but, but golly, it just seems like it didn't feel like. Okay, Gator Frank. Football. So here's the question. You know that going in and Pearsall gets hurt and you went an entire half. An entire half without one run from the guy who said well, you got to feel 240 pounds. Yes. Well, it, it's mind numbing to me that that occurred and that's not the coaches. And I'll tell you why I know, I know for a bunch of reasons, but I'm now convinced it's him. And I'll tell you why the coaching staff was probably so ticked off the first play of the second half, first they two plays. put the snapped him the ball and told him they didn't even give him an option. Right. You're running a sweep to the right. Go. Right. The first two plays, the first two plays of the second half, he ran the ball. I'll tell you what, I was working another game. I was working the Ohio State Maryland game, but I, so I looked at my phone. It's too short. I'm, I'm trying to prepare for the game and talking to people and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I got the game kind of on, and I and I'm kind of half watching. It, so I'm going to go back and watch it. But then I looked at my phone and my favorite follow on Twitter, Dan Hick, and everybody's favorite follow. <laughs> certainly my favorite follow. The one thing I see is you go, "How did we play a half and the quarterback didn't run the ball?" And I don't know this at the time until I right. see the tweet. And yeah. I'm, I lost my mind. I showed it to my color guy. I said, my buddy just tweeted this. How does he not run? So I'm yelling in a, in the Maryland press box about, <laughs> because I saw your tweet. I, you, your tweet at halftime. Yeah. I couldn't believe he didn't run the ball. I, and and I agree with you. Not and, only will he, and by the way, Napier said at halftime, he can run the ball on every play. Yeah. So not only does he not run the ball on the, on the ones where we put it in the belly. And by the way, if you put it in the belly of the running back, okay. Right. And you run that play, which is like their bread and butter play. 25 times and you never run it. Right. It takes away, it well, makes a play tougher to be successful. That's number one. Number two, you're, this also includes drop back scrambles. Like yeah. AR should be able to run for 150 yards a game, every game. Yeah. Like if he drops back to pass and there was a second to last drive where he missed the fourth and three, I was second and three and the, the C parted. And I would tell Anthony, Anthony, Have you watched Patrick Mahomes? You know what? He's the best quarterback in the NFL. You know what he does when things aren't there? He runs. Well, forget before you even get to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. If you look at the college guys, we've had this talk on the podcast before, Dan. If you look at the college guys that have been great runners, Tebow, Vince Young, Mm -hmm. Cam, Mm -hmm. Johnny Manziel, you know what they all have? Hendon Hooker this year. You know what they all have in common? They can't wait to run. You've got to you've got to tell them to stop running. Right. You, the, the coach has got to bring them to the sideline and say, "Listen, I know you had a lane, a, a lane and, you, and you made 17 yards, but hang in there a little longer right. and go through your progressions before you take off." The right. biggest thing you have to tell these running quarterbacks usually is, "Hey, don't run so fast. Mm-hmm. Don't bail on your." Well, with Anthony, it's just it's clear, and it's, for whatever reason, protecting yeah. yourself. He or doesn't want to run. He doesn't look like a guy doesn't that wants want to, to run. run the football. Yeah, and it's, he, it's very Frank, clear. He threw for 400 yards, right? and I was mad at him. Well, the two games they threw for 400 yards, they lost the game. They're, they're, or, or 400 or 350. If he won't run, they don't win. They have no Correct. shot. That's yeah. right. Because and for obvious reasons, the receivers aren't great playmakers. Right. And, and and they don't have an, they don't have a, an exotic passing game. Right. So they're, not, they're and the only time, by the way, the two games he threw for the big yards, Tennessee and Vanderbilt, is because they played from behind the whole game. 
Also and true. when you're when you're playing from the behind, you get the yardage can be deceiving. I'm glad he threw for all those yards, but they were playing from behind. You're playing against prevent defenses. When the other guy's up and hanging on for a win, they're going to back up and let you have all those 20 yarders. Mm-hmm. And those 20 yarders add up to 400 yards. So I, I, I totally agree with you. So so uh, listen, here's what we know: the the Billy Napier coaching Anthony Richardson offense thing isn't working great. No. Okay. If it has, you wouldn't have lost five games and you're about to lose a sixth. Right. That wouldn't be the case of that. Whether that's Billy is limited as a play caller, whether that's Anthony is limited as a quarterback, whether that's decisions he's making that are opposed from what Billy wants him to make, that isn't working. And and I and and we at some point we have to figure that out. Okay. Right. We have to that part isn't working. I, I and I so I, so I'm concerned about very concerned about the offense. I got I got a look ahead thought, but I want to stay on this game for a second. Sure. The other thought I've got about this thing, this, this game is, at what point does Anthony stop making? I mean, the fourth and three you talked about, they ran a go route and they overthrew the guy by 10 yards. I know. Now, I, now, I know they converted a fourth down earlier. And that's why I think it's probably in his head. But yeah, you got to pick up the first down. Just yes. the, it's that there's a little bit of common sense stuff too. Like, you know, the last play of the game, you're not going to win. It's going to get knocked down, but give somebody a chance to catch it. Don't throw it through the back of the end zone. What was that? Well, one time, yeah, and I, and I, I totally agree with you. There's, there's balls. There's, there's, listen, there's a knack for playing quarterback. It's just you have a knack to do it. And if there's there's some guys, that doesn't mean you're not smart. It doesn't mean you're not talented. It doesn't mean you don't care. It doesn't mean you don't work hard. Right. Some guys just don't have a knack of knowing what play to make. And I don't know that he does. And, I, I, and you say, well, well, Frank, you're saying that when he's through for 400 yards. Well, you watch the game. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a difference between seeing the box score and watching the game. Sure. And so so I, I am concerned about that. A little the general bit. consensus I, is that he's going to leave. Right. That he yeah. continues to be told he's a first round pick. Right. And I don't blame him. I mean, I don't care if that's 20 million dollars if you're 32nd. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I don't I don't blame him one bit for that. Um, at this point, I'm not sure if that would be best for everybody involved. There are a lot of rumors out there about certain kids transfer portal is going to be big. Uh, the Rashada kid, we'll see what happens, but now they got to turn around and focus and take on FSU. And, you know, I guess Vegas knew at the beginning of the year, we'd scratch, I scratched my head and said, why would FSU be favored in this game? That was back in the summer. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, 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 let me tell you this, and I'm going to, I'm going to call you out, Dan Hickett from Fort La- for Miami, Nova high Please, okay? sunset. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I told you we had we had this little poll about yeah. best coach in the state. Okay, yeah. and and I said, well, we don't know yet. Napier just got there. Chris Paul yeah. just got there. Yeah. And, and I say on the air, okay, yeah. on a radio station. Yeah. That for all we know, it might be Mike Norvell. We haven't really seen him with his guys yet. Yeah. Oh, Dan, you and the Gator Boys were all over me. Yes, I was. I, I was tarred and feathered for that comment. Should I be too. Happened, Should okay? be. And, and I'm still not saying he is, by the way. <laughs> Napier and Cristobal need need to have the same. He's done the game. best job this year. But he's done a good job this year. Yeah. The, the, the fact is they're pretty good. They have a pretty good team. So no, so I'm kidding you about that. But the truth is, hey, they, they have a good team. Yeah. They, they have now, now they have not beaten the I expected they were coming into this game eight and three. Florida was coming in seven and four. I didn't think Florida was going to lose to Vandy. Right. And then I thought our the 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 advance to this game. The, 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 the pre- preparation for this game would be one team's eight and three, the other team's seven and four, but the seven and four team has played Tennessee and Georgia right. and, and, and the eight and three team really hasn't. They've, right. So, so it would look, it would have game would have looked more. I think if Florida wins that game by 10 points, yeah. the line this week is five. Okay. Huh. Maybe, maybe, Absolutely. maybe four. Yeah. So, so, but now FSU is playing with such confidence. Florida is a wounded animal. It's at night. With everybody watching, that that place it, it, it never fills up, but it's going to be filled up this week. Oh yeah, I, this is a tough one. I, I I the only thing where I hold out some hope is this: uh-huh. nobody's rolled Florida. Even Georgia took a while to roll. Okay, mm-hmm. so and Georgia rolled them. I'm not denying that, but everybody else, Florida somehow has stayed in the game. I'm not completely sure how. Okay, but somehow they've stayed in the game. My biggest concern is FSU is going to run it on them because everybody runs it on them. And FSU might have the best running team in the country. That's my concern, Dan, is 10-yard carry, 18-yard carry, 11-yard carry. Isn't that the biggest concern in this game? Yeah, they've run for 200-plus yards, six straight games. They have more 20-yard plays than anybody in the country. I think we're doomed. And my only, my only joy this week is that everything shuts down Wednesday because it's Thanksgiving and I can go hide in a hole so I can avoid FSU fan right uh, at least until Monday 
and yep. and not have to deal with them because they're laying in wait for me on Twitter and deservedly so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't feel I have yeah. a terrible feeling under the lights, that type of yeah. atmosphere. Uh, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know, Frank. I, I I don't see us slowing them down. Yeah, this one's got this one's got forty one seventeen written all yes. over it. It really has got thirty eight thirteen written all over it. I, I there's no and and I'll say that the one not a saving grace, but I will say this: mm-hmm. if you're a Florida State fan, you better win this one. I hope because, Elon Musk shuts down Twitter this week. Yeah, <laughs> because I mean, just so you know, and this is for the Jacksonville folks. I, yes. I know there's a lot of listeners that aren't Jacksonville folks. This is for the Jacksonville folks. Yes. But the last time FSU beat Florida, Miles Jack wasn't not down yet. Okay. It's been a while. Yes. Okay? Yeah, I mean, it's been a minute since Miles Jack wasn't down. Yes, it has. And the last time FSU won was before that play. Wow. So so it's been a while. And so and if you don't win this one in your stadium, and he is going to recruit good players, and you got to go to his stadium next year. Yeah. This is a this is a big so there is pressure on there's way more pressure on FSU. Good point. People expect Florida to lose. Florida does have, you know, if Anthony Richardson goes crazy, who yeah. knows? You know, which he's knows? capable of. Which he is capable of. So, so that's the hope. But let, let me say this as you move forward. I got a thought about this. Mm-hmm. I'm very concerned about the offense, the play calling, the the play fakes late in the game when you're down a bunch. Um, the fact that there's nothing, there's nothing fancy, there's nothing exotic. But I got to thinking about this. Mm-hmm. I, I said this about Mike Norvell, and I'm damn sure going to say it about our guy. Mm-hmm. You deserve a chance to, to, to gut the problem to bring sure. in your guys. Well, uh, he's playing mostly with guys he didn't recruit. But I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you four guys he did recruit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Montrell Johnson, uh, Trevor Etienne, mm-hmm. Osiris Torrance, mm-hmm. and, Rick, and Ricky Pearsall. Uh, he, he recruited those four guys. Yeah. Are those the four best offensive players? Yeah. Close, close to it, right? Yeah. So so if he's got a team full of 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 okay. Torrance's and Pierce, you know what I'm saying? My point. I mean I like I mean, that. If he I mean those are his guys. You've made those me feel are, a modicum of I'm, this much better. And I'm and I know I'm reaching. And this is a great reach. But we gotta reach. But at we some lost point to Vandy, yeah. Frank. Vandy. At, some, at some point he's gonna have eleven offensive guys he recruited. At some point that's coming. Okay. And the four offensive guys that he recruited are pretty good players. Okay. So, so I'll hold out a little bit of hope. Should he have played? Was Douglas hurt by the way? Number 12. Was he, I don't know. I didn't. Yeah. He didn't seem to Yeah, be out there at 16 was out there. Don't ask me his name. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But, but, but 12, I thought Kai came on a little bit before and didn't see him at all. So must've been nicked up. Listen. um, And by the way, SEC don't find Vandy for storming the field. That was not a storm. Stop. No, no, for, number one, it, it took about count. half an hour to get out there. Number one, <laughs> but, but, you know, by they the didn't know what they to had, do, Frank. I think it was, they it was hadn't won a get, home game in a conference <laughs> forever. It was about to get dark before they got out there. It was the slowest field storm of all time, wasn't it? Oh my it? gosh. It was so, no, and, and, and by the way, and right, in the field storm, they didn't even cover half the field. They only had about 20,000 people there. So it wasn't, I agree, but it was a bad, bad, it was a bad loss all the way around. Frank, we should mention this, too, because we know this, uh, um, and it happened here. Uh, Marcus Stokes is a kid who uh, was going to go to Florida. He's a quarterback from Nice High School in Jacksonville. We followed his high school career, um, and he learned it a hard way um, about social media, about be careful what you say. We preach this to our kids all the time, and Marcus uh, used a racial slur. And it got posted. I don't know how it got posted. I don't frankly care how it got posted, but there are consequences for actions. Florida pulled its offer. Um, and listen, it's. I feel badly for everybody involved. I feel badly for Florida because if, you know, either way they're going to get criticized. Mm-hmm. I feel badly for the young man because I don't think the racial slur was meant with intent. It was him right. singing a song. Right. So I don't want to, get into the whole i'm just sort of reporting that it has happened marcus stokes now uh will not be going to florida it didn't happen because they got rashada it didn't happen because florida had soured on him it happened because of that and that alone yeah and, and first of all i agree with everything you said and let, and let me let me add this mm-hmm. I, I everything i think you by the way you sur- summarize it perfectly and everything you said is dead on I don't believe the kid is a racist. Mm-hmm. He was singing a song that he was listening to mm-hmm. and, and he recorded himself of singing the song. And, and, and I don't, and I don't know. And I know people that do know him mm-hmm. and, and I don't, I don't believe Marcus Stokes is a racist. I don't. And I'm like you, I don't believe that. Okay. Now they turned him loose because they got Rashada. Right. But I also understand to outsiders 
and haters and anybody else or defenders of, of, of Marcus, how it would look like that. Sure. Uh, according to what people say, the, the video has been out there for a while, mm -hmm. but but he doesn't get kicked off the team or doesn't get a scholarship pulled, not kicked off the team, doesn't get the offer pulled until after the other quarterback commits. So you can understand why it looks that mm -hmm. way. I mean, you're, you're being, we're being disingenuous if we don't say how mm -hmm. we understand how it looks that way. Having said that, having said all that, I understand why it, how it looks like Rashada enabled them to move on from Stokes. And a lot of people thought once they got Rashada, it was going to be hard for Stokes anyway. I hate that Stokes is not going to be able to go there because I think he might be a pretty good player. But I don't know that Florida had any choice here, Dan. You even right. if the even if the kid's not a racist at all, I never meant that. If there's any conversation about that while you're recruiting other kids, while you're in, in today's climate, if there's even a hint mm -hmm. that, there, that that something racist involved a kid that's on your football team. I don't know that you can you can still make the offer, even yeah. even though I'll bet you Billy Napier doesn't think the kid's a racist. Right. I'll bet I'll bet nobody nobody everyone feels bad for the kid, including the Florida people that pulled the offer. But I don't know that in this one you had any choice. Yeah. You got to continue to recruit players. You got to coach the players that are on your campus, and if even one, two, or five of them think, well, maybe the kid meant something bad by that. You now have destroyed the culture or you've chipped away at the culture that you've worked so hard to build. So as much as I hate it, I don't know that once it came out and once it's a thing, I'm not sure Florida had much choice in that, Dan. I'm really not. Uh, before we get out of here, uh, Frank, one other thing. I was sharpening up the knives for the golden yeah. era. Yeah. Um, yes. I was going to come at you, uh, even though it's not your fault. I like to hold people responsible, as like you heard that. at the beginning of the program. And that. you as our basketball reporter, yes. I was going to hold – a hundred percent responsible. Like, is right. this what we've become? Right. And in a strange, quirky, weird game between two teams that I don't think are great by any stretch. Um, FSU couldn't miss in the first half. Right. And I'm like, they're down 17 and they came back and, uh, and won a basketball game. And that was a really nice comeback win on the road, no matter who you're playing. I know FSU's not very good, but well, you got to take yeah. something like that. Right. All right. Two, two thoughts. Number one is a great win for Todd Golden because they worked hard and they deserve that. Right. And anytime you beat the Knowles, it's a good day. Okay. Yeah. They, right. they, and so, so I think it's a great win for them and I'm really glad they won it. And I don't want to take anything away from it. It's hard to come back 17 down on the road, no matter who you're playing sure. against a rival and to come back and win convincingly. I also think that Colin Castleton is going to be one of the best players in America. Wow. And I'm glad, and I'm glad Florida has him. How you far, know? how much better has that kid gotten since when he, was at Michigan his first no year and averaging like a point. Right. Really good player. A, yeah. do a dominant, dominant player. Yeah. And so I'm glad they have it. Having said that, I am concerned it's going to be a tough year. Yeah. I Listen, as much as I hate to say this, and I'm rooting for all of them, but there's a reason these guys were at St. Bonaventure and VMI and Belmont. It's because Kentucky and Louisville and Indiana didn't offer them. You know, and, and the reality, and maybe they've gotten better since they were at those schools. Sure. And, and, I, and I think Golden's going to be a good coach, mm -hmm. but, I, but I, I don't hold out hope that this is going to be a great, the SEC is better than it's ever been in basketball. Mm -hmm. It's deeper than it's ever been. Uh, they're about to go play Xavier and maybe Gonzaga and maybe Duke yeah. uh, this week. I think, it, I hope I'm wrong, but watching that game on Friday, this could be a tough go. It could be a, it could be a long year. I hope I'm wrong about that. Yep. It was a great win, and I don't want to dismiss the great win. You made a great point about that. Great win. They deserve all the kudos in the world. But I'm nervous about what the, the basketball season might bring. I really am. So, so we'll find. All right, out. all right. There you go. That's, uh, what uh, uh, any chance this week? And you can give the, it's a Gator podcast. Can, yeah. Wait, before we get out of here, anything? And do you have anything for me? For this week? Yeah, I got to. You know, I got to try to hold on to the SEC versus ACC. I like what you said about yeah. playing a little bit tougher teams. Uh, they know what yeah. to expect, but uh, and and Anthony Richardson, uh, if if he doesn't run the ball fifteen times, they have no chance. And if he doesn't feel like running, and I don't know what the reason is behind it, uh, be it yeah. injury, be it fear of injury, be it protecting himself, be it don't like to run. I don't know what it is, but if he does not run the ball, they cannot win. So if he has fifteen yeah. at the end of that game Friday night, maybe a shot. Not real confident. Yeah, and, that, and, and that's the only shot that's going to be tough. All right, there you go. That's all things Gators, all things orange and blue, Dan Hicken and Frank Frangie. All right, Frank, and thank you to Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. Again, se-ortho.com for all your orthopedic needs in the Jacksonville area. Frank, have a good week. We're back next Monday. You too, Hick. See you, buddy.